Hey there friends, it's Darren here from ProBlogger. Today I want to take you through my live streaming setup, the home studio that I've developed over the years for the live streaming that I do particularly over on Facebook. I've been doing it now for a couple of years and over that time what I've uh, been using has evolved quite considerably. I remember in the early days I was just using the uh, little FaceTime camera on my computer um, kind of looked like this and it wasn't the best kind of look it was looking up at me I kind of had the double chin thing going on and gradually over time I've been able to evolve what I do by changing the cameras the microphones the lights and uh, the tools that I use to go live as well and so today I want to kind of take you through a little bit about um, what I'm using to get the type of video that you're watching right now. Now, I'm not doing this live video as a live today because our internet has been struggling a little bit. Uh, we've got kids home and the whole neighborhood have kids home with COVID-19. And so internet upload speeds kind of come and go a little bit. And so it's been a little bit tough uh, upgrade, upgrading that connection in the coming week. So I wanted to record it today and uh, I'm going to take you through it using my iPhone which I've kind of got plugged into the system today so you can kind of see a little bit behind the scenes. The one thing I want to say right up front is that this system has evolved over the years and a lot of what I'm using is actually stuff that I've bought for other purposes. I bought my camera for still photography, I bought some of the sound system that I'm using uh, for podcasting. Uh, and so you may actually be able to use some gear that you already have if you are involved in creating content in different ways. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of different options in terms of setups today as well. I'm going to talk about the camera I use, but also give you a more affordable option as well. Same with the microphone system that I'm using. Okay, let's start off by uh, having a look at the camera. Let me um, first do some switching around here. And uh, we're going to switch over to hopefully the uh, iPhone. There we go. So let me kind of go back here, give you a bit of a look at the system. We've got uh, light, two lights, a microphone, and the camera. And it's all set up on a mobile desk. And uh, this is a standing desk, which I can change the height of as well. This camera is where we're going to start off. And as I said before, this camera is one that I bought for still photography. It's a Sony A7 III, and it is kind of overkill for live streaming, but it works perfectly for it. And this is one of the things I'd encourage you to think about, is if you already have a digital SLR or uh, a camera already that you use, you may be able to stream with it. And so do a bit of research on that. If you are buying a new camera for streaming, I probably wouldn't encourage you to go quite as high as I have with this camera. I bought this because it's a full frame camera. It uh, enables me to take low light photography. Uh, but if you wanted to do something for live streaming, Sony make a whole range of cameras and I'd encourage you to look at their A5000, the A6000 range. Um, they're uh, probably the best one in that range is the A6400, um, which is uh, about half the price, I think, of the camera that I'm using. And you might want to look at about a 16 millimeter lens. I think Sigma uh, created a 16 mil lens, which is quite wide angle, similar to what I'm using here. And it has a fast aperture of 1.4. The lens I'm using here is a 28 millimeter lens, but because it's on a full frame camera, it's uh, a little bit different uh, to, uh, in comparison to that 16 mil one. So um, the, the main thing I would encourage you to do is to buy a lens that enables you to get as big an aperture as you can as you're able to afford. What I'm do using here is the 28 mil uh, Sony, and it's got an F2 aperture, which basically means that you can open up the little blades in the lens as big as possible to let lots of light in. And one of the good things about having a fast lens like that is that you're able to get a blurry background. You're able to isolate yourself from the background, which is why I've got this impact here. If I was to uh, uh, make that hole in the lens smaller by um, increasing the numbers of the aperture, so going up to say f10, uh, it would make me and the background in focus, which is a uh, 
totally fine look to have as well. So uh, I'm using this A7 III, um, but you might want to look at Sony's A5000s or A6000s. There's quite a few cameras in that. The other lens I do use occasionally is this one here, and this is a 55 millimeter, uh, sorry, a 50 millimeter lens, and it has an aperture of 1.8. So this enables me to get in even closer. If I was to put this lens on my camera right now, it would frame me sort of more like this. Uh, it would really fill up um, um, the camera, but I could use this also if I put the camera further away. So that's the camera I'm using. I've got it mounted on a, you can see there on a Manfrotto magic arm, it's called this part here, which enables me if I pull this lever here to move it backwards, to swing it around, to change the angle of the camera, to straighten it up um, and to change the angles on that. Um, I've also got articulating arms on my microphone and also one of my lights. And uh, at some point I'll probably get the second light onto that as well. Now, the reason I actually set everything up on this mobile desk is uh, with these arms is to enable me to be able to move my setup around the room. And uh, if you've been watching my Facebook lives on um, on Facebook on the Pro Blogger page, you'll see that sometimes I set up way back there on the um, next to the computer, sitting down. So I'm able to just wheel this whole desk across there and move that one light over, and there it is, and put the, put it down so I can sit down as well. And so I really wanted to design something that was mobile and that I could just move everything around, don't have to set it up every time. Uh, the fact that I can move these lights around as well is great. So let me talk about these lights. These are newer lights in double E, W E R, and they're the 480 LEDs. And so you can see, I, I hope there in the screen, um, some little dots. And basically each one of those dots in there is a LED light. I've got a soft box on there. Newer make these as well. It was bought separately. And um, the, the whole setup basically was these two lights that I've got in front of me. Um, they came with light stands um, and they were really affordable. I was quite amazed at how affordable. The reason I put soft boxes on them and I bought them uh, as extras, I think they were about $30 Australian to get the soft boxes each. Um, that softens the light, which is particularly useful if you've got glasses. Um, I've probably got them slightly too in front of me at the moment, so you can kind of see in my glasses a little bit of a reflection going on there. But ultimately, you probably want them slightly to the sides, and the softer the light, the better, because it actually diffuses the light, makes it softer on your face, and you get a little less of this shadowing. If I didn't have those um, diffusers on, they'd be really quite um, pronounced shadows, and so that's something that I could do. I could move this one across to the side a little bit more there just to kind of get rid of some of those reflections as well. And this tends to work. I've also got non-reflective glasses, which cuts down some of the glare as well. So if I didn't have these on, they'd be quite bright and it makes the, the reflection a little bit more blue as well. I've got one of these lights again on the um, the articulating stand there. This isn't a magic arm, it's just one of um, Manfrotto's other um, lights as well. This light over this side is set up more on a uh, light stand and that one isn't on um, a magic arm. So um, in terms of microphones, let's kind of get this angle going up here. This is a pod mic by Rode. I've, most of my sound gear has been Rode and it always has been. Uh, this particular little mic is quite small, uh, smaller than the previous one I had and it's, um, it's got a different kind of connection. Um, previously I had a USB uh, connection. This is an XLR connection um, which uh, produces maybe a slightly better quality sound but it also enables me to plug into uh, this contraption here which again I didn't buy for lights live streaming. I bought this for um, podcasting and it enables me to plug in four microphones using the XLR um, system and to control the volume of each person. At the moment I'm just using the one input and you can see there my levels on the side. Um, it enables me to plug in different headphones to do sound effects, to bring in sound from my phone uh, or via Bluetooth or via USB. So it enables you to have a lot of control and it also has lots of presets built into it to uh, change the quality 
quality of um, the sound as well, which is really uh, quite nice. You're able to match um, the mix that you get to the particular microphone. And this being a Rode microphone, I can just put in that it's a pod mic and it will uh, automatically set some settings. It also has some settings to kind of get rid of some of your P's and your s sounds uh, as well. So that's the Rodecaster Pro. But it's kind of overkill. You don't need all of this. I could quite easily do what I'm doing by getting a USB microphone, which is what I previously was using. I was using uh, Rode's, I think it was called, let, I've got it written down here. Um, the Rode Podcaster, which was a USB microphone, or you could get a Blue Yeti or any of the USB microphones and just plug it straight into your computer as well. So you could not have all of that, not have the XLR kind of system. Uh, so there are more affordable ways to do that. Okay, a couple of other things that I kind of have set up here. Let me kind of get this for you. This little device here is the cam link and it takes the signal signal this white wire here goes into the side of my camera that's a hdmi output and it goes into the cam link and cam link kind of does some magic puts it into a usb this connection here is a usb and then i just convert it into a usb c the cam link is kind of like a a capture card i guess in many ways um, which enables you to get your signal out of a hdmi connection so this enables um, most digital slrs now most cameras now to be able to be live streaming cameras as well so the cam link is the system i use there are others out there other um, devices that will do that as well I've, I can run multiple cameras coming in here or multiple sources of video. So you are actually been watching me um, uh, take another signal in from my iPhone. Um, and I can also use other things on my iPhone. I can use the screen capture on my iPhones. For example, let me just switch over here to my keynote presentation, which is there. So that's the keynote presentation um, that I can pull in from my iPhone or in from my iPad. And I previously have used my iPad to run my keynotes. So I can then place myself up in the corner, do some presentation, talk about the type of things that I've got going on. Whilst this is up, let me just run you through the list again. I think I've covered most of it. Um, I've got the uh, camera, which is the Sony a7 III. Alternative there would be an A6400 or one of the other cameras in that lineup. I've got the 28mm lens on, which is a wide angle lens, which I quite like. If you're going to go with the A6000 type camera, you'd probably go for a 16mm lens there. Um, uh, I'm using the pod mic from Rode, um, uh, but you could use a Rodecaster, uh, Rode Podcaster. Um, my mic's plugged in and running through the Rodecaster Pro, um, but you wouldn't need to do that if you've got a USB microphone as well. I should say that there are some extra microphones that I use from time to time as well. Um, just This is a Shure microphone, the SM58. I have a couple of these. Um, one of them I set up using uh, this mic stand, which actually came with this um, pod mic. Um, and I will set these up if I was doing a live video with two people, as I did recently with my son, who um, kind of went through his favorite books. I interviewed him and he sat behind that. And so that's a, a good, reasonably affordable XLR microphone as well that you might want to look at. Um, back to the... Um, slides there. I've got to memorize my um, my uh, shortcuts a little bit better. So I'm using um, those microphones. The lights were from newer. Uh, another light that I've been using um, and I used before this was these ones. These are like the LEDGO. They're relatively small. They're again, they're a USB microphone. A USB. <laughs> They're an LED uh, light, and you can see all the little dots in there. They enable you to kind of um, go up and down. So this is a single color one. This is a daylight rated one. I should have said before, these lights here are twin colors. You can actually set them as daylight, white, or you can do tungsten. So you can actually make them yellow as well. These ones are just the one color. 
um, at Ledgo make a bicolor one as well. You can actually see I've got one set up there behind my computer just to give it a little bit of accent lighting. And I've got another one down here to the side which I'm using just to spray some light up onto the background as well. I probably should have this one set up here as well just to give a little bit of extra light as well. You can use these sort of for, for effects, but I used to use these to actually light myself um, and, and when I didn't have my other lights as well. Um, the articulated arms that I'm using there were from Manfrotto and I'll, I'll, we'll link to all of these in the show notes uh, underneath this video as well if you do want to get a direct uh, link out to them. Um, the last two things I'll say is that I got my desk, this little desk, from Officeworks here in Australia. You'd find these everywhere. You, um, this was actually advertised as a mobile lectern. Um, and it's relatively small. It's actually got some built-in cup holders and that type of thing underneath the Rodecaster Pro there. Um, if I was doing this again with this kind of gear, I'd probably go for something slightly wider. Um, what I do um, miss is being able to put my iPad next to my computer here. Um, I should mention the computer I'm using is about a three or four year old a MacBook Pro uh, and it's keeping up relatively well with all this stuff going into it. I do notice that if I have too much going into it, it slows down a little bit and that you know, can have an impact upon the quality of um, the video that's coming out as well. The last thing I'll say is that I'm using a um, software, the software that's kind of running all of this. And I'll, again, I'll show you um, this kind of screen of what I'm actually setting up here now. This is um, Ecamm Live. And Ecamm Live is a tool, I've talked about this before for those of you who do watch my live videos. It enables me to do all kinds of things. Um, so again, I can get rid of my own little picture in picture there. I can uh, change the scene. There's scenes up here so I could do, I could add lower thirds underneath my picture. Um, that goes back to just cam link without the lower thirds. Um, I can go back to my screen here. So you can have multiple cameras that you can switch between and not just camera sources of video as well. I could also drag in some video and play it halfway through my live. Um, I can do overlays, all kinds of things as well. Can bring in multiple microphones as well. So um, Ecamm Live is a great tool. It enables you to go live onto um, Facebook or Periscope or YouTube, um, one of those at a time, but it also, as you're doing that, will record a local copy of it that you can then upload somewhere else. So I could go live onto Facebook and then take that video and upload it onto YouTube. Or I could use a uh, service like Restream and broadcast to it and then it sends it out to multiple sources at once. So there's a variety of ways that you can do that. Ecamm is a Mac only tool, but there are other um, uh, software alternatives out there that you could use on a PC. Uh, Ecamm I love because it's, it's really affordable and they're constantly updating it. There's constantly new things coming out on it. You can do all kinds of creative things like um, add in a countdown clock. Um, uh, you can add, make your lower thirds kind of animated by um, bringing in an animated um, video from a, a keynote that you might run as well. Uh, there's all kinds of things and there's a whole community of people doing interesting things with Ecamm Live as well. I think they've got a 14 day um, free trial as well. I'll have a link to it under this video. So that's the system I'm using. I love the fact that it is mobile. I love the fact that I can actually have three or four different um, setups in this one office space. I can have this big one um, behind me where I can stand up. I love standing up when I do my videos, my podcasting, because I've, I feel like it brings me a bit more energy, but I can also set it up down uh, at the computer and have a little bit more of an intimate chat with people. Um, and I can, I'm can i actually going to get a couch and put it in behind the camera as well um, there and have that as a third place that um, I can do lives from as well. So I love the fact that I can move it around relatively easy. I can actually have this set up the whole time. It sits over there behind my door uh, so no one sees it as they're walking past, but I pull it out and I can be doing a live within about a minute because it's all set up constantly for me. I just switch everything on and then go live. 
Hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, you don't have to have all of the stuff that I have. You can go live with a phone um, directly into Facebook Live. But if you do want to increase the quality of what you're doing, lights, uh, a purpose-built microphone, a better camera can all lift the quality of what you do. I'll have links underneath all the gear that I've mentioned. They are affiliate links. I get a small, very small commission from Amazon if you buy through my links. Uh, and I appreciate it if you do that. Um, but if you've got other gear already at home, please feel free to use that as well. And let us know what you are using under this video in the comments. If you've got any questions, pop them in there as well. Thanks for watching. If you do want to watch my Facebook Lives going forward, just head over to Facebook dot com forward slash pro blogger and you'll find um the um the, the the lives that we do there one last thing i should say a disadvantage of setting up on this mobile you may have just seen i rested my hands upon the desk and it wobbled a little so this is one of the downsides of this type of setup i could probably stabilize this a little bit more I find that it wobbles more when I'm standing up, when I kind of bring the desk up to its full height. It doesn't wobble when I'm down low anywhere near as much. I could set the camera up behind on a tripod to alleviate that problem as well. But that's just one of the costs of being able to move this whole setup around. Hope you find that useful. Love to chat with you soon. See you later.